everybody, Xdesign101 here, and today we're going to be making the monster cube and a few edits to the animator and character so that we can also attack this cube here. Uh, did I already kill the cube that quickly? Oh, I did too. But as you've seen, I, I made a hit, the cube is dead. Uh, the, because of the size of the cube and where the the blood splat's going, it's not showing very well. Uh, I could have made it sl uh, sl slimmer, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so let's get started on this. So for now, I'm just going to apply and then delete this here because we're going to make a, another monster cube here so to start off we want to create an empty game object in the scene uh, yeah and we want to change the name to monster cube then we need to create a cube in the inside here we actually want to zero out this cube. Oh, whoops. We'll 0 0.5 it like this here, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5, there you go. This way you'll actually see the, the hit of the attack better. Now add components, apply game, character, NPC, NPC controller, screen name, Monster, monster cube class you don't have the monster class yet so go to the main editor in the play game uh, toolbar here go to classes press the plus sign change the screen name to monster click all add all now both for player and monster you're going to want to adjust your max level your max experience and then uh, this uh, thing right here this Thing that's blue and white that shows you you can adjust that by just clicking on it and uh, you can set it from linear to sign which means it starts off easy and then the game gets really hard at the end so uh, that's what i like so you uh, mess around with that as you please there's uh, different ones there's cubic which would start off like really easy and then get like you know crazy hard but uh sign is perfect for me you mess with that yourselves and figure out which one works for you depending on the xp you well i mean the experience you use yeah xp short form you could also uh use uh, short names for these but uh, i just like to use the screen name it's a little easier but uh, for some things we probably will use the short name because it's easier to get to uh, in some cases but we'll talk more about that later. So let's continue with this. Now that we have our class, let's just uh, click on our monster cube, set its class to monster. We want to set its faction to monster here. Now we have a our project materials. If you don't have one, make one now by right clicking on the assets folder and create new folder. We'll click back on our cube here. So we'll go back into here, right click create material once you create a material name it monster cube click on that albedo i think that's what it's called yeah in the main maps change that color i made it like a skin type color now drag it onto your cube well, it's not really it's like a pinky i don't know it would, be, it would go good for some sort of blob character for instance i guess but in our case it is a cube so let's continue here. So now that it has that, we are good to go. Um, we now need to go back and add a play game character NPC movement. We're going to use the pro move nav mesh because that's just the way to go. This way we'll have decently smart NPCs. So this is one it's base offset v0.5 height uh, let's see here radius ooh sounds like I'm kind of hungry 
There we go. That's all spot on now. Uh, in the NPC controller, we are going to make a couple modifications. We want to set the turn speed to 700. You'll see why if you do not. The character will turn really slowly, so... Yeah. You won't notice it now, but... Well, you will notice it now, yeah, because you'll see that the character will slowly turn to face the direction it's walking. Or if it's at 700, it faces the direction it's walking right away. Which is what you want for an NPC. Uh, the idle mode, we want to set it to wander. And give it a nice wander distance here. Keep its think interval the same. Now we want to add a detection. So we want to be able to detect the player if the status is hostile. So leave that as is. Keep the intervals here. The engaged min distance and max distance. Uh, max distance. Basically, that's uh, how far away like he's gonna be before. Like if he's f more than five distance away from you, he's gonna stop trying to chase you. If he's anything closer than two, he'll actually back up a bit. Uh, you're his disengaged from home and then target. So let's say. Uh, he's, uh, he, let's see, that's a little high, but, like, uh, he'll disengage from you quickly from 10 feet, and then if you're 35 feet from his home, he'll disengage and go back to his, uh, spawn point, his spawn point, more or less. Uh, now our detection, we want to mess with this, see how we have our forward angle here, we'll, it, most, uh, cubes, or even people, if you're using a normal character, would have about at least a 90 degree field vision you can give him a nice field of view that goes forward so our forward distance would probably be a good 10 and then uh, we'll keep our radius distance so this way you know if you get close enough I'll, he'll hear you for instance that's what we'll go with <laughs> uh, we'll add a ply block so you can just go to ply game ply blocks we'll need that in here for later now our character should uh, move around just fine now. Uh, we don't want it to destroy after that many seconds. It's too long. We'll do five seconds. Perfect. Uh, now we're just going to drag and drop our monster cube. I'm going to call this one monster cube uh, 2 into my NPCs folder just so we can save it. I guess it's called monster cube 1 now. Whatever. doesn't matter. <laughs> Now that it's in there, it's going to walk around, and if I get close, he's just going to, like, follow me. But uh, he has no attack yet, so it's not like it's going to kill me in any way. We have no, like, health bar or anything, so uh, you'll see that he'll just die when I hit him a few times. A few things that we do need to change first, because you're going to receive uh, an error, probably, or have been receiving an error in your... Uh, character when trying to pull off your attack animation that's uh, because we actually need to go back to our animator here by double clicking on our animator and uh, you can just remove the uh, float attack and uh, delete the uh, original uh, exit that was here by clicking on it and pressing delete on your keyboard and then create a new transition set that transition to has exit and add no conditions to it at all we don't need to with that being done like that we now need to go onto our art there we placed an animator controller here we want to actually not this animation but the animator controller we had here we'll right click and copy it and then we'll paste it into our uh, main character here as you can see the animated controller that has our character one and our blade underscore warrior avatar we want to paste it in here once you do that, you will no longer have any more problems. I don't need uh, character 2 anymore because that was just used to show you guys how to build it. Alright, so now that you're all fixed up, once you load into the game here, you have a wandering cube. He comes after me. I'm going to hit him. I don't think he's close enough. Is it hitting? I don't know. I think it did. I think he's dead. No, no, he is not. Is he too short for me to actually hit him? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so he's too short for me to hit him. 
so uh, we'll click on our monster cube here. We'll add its height to 1.5. And then we'll click apply. We'll click play. Oh, yeah, we need to actually add a capsule collider. Capsule Collider is actually going to be the thing that uh, uh, 0 0.3. It's going to be what calculates the damage for us, because you, the the nav mesh is just uh, doing the the movement for us. But we need to actually cal something to calculate our damage. So now that we actually have our Capsule Collider on there, uh, the one thing that I forgot, it'll hit. Click on our. Yeah, see, he's almost dead. It says it's making the blood splat, but for some reason it does not the show. NPCs, monster cube. Okay, anyway. So it's working. I guess it's just because my blood splat's a little small, so if I was to make that bigger, it would uh, show. because it, it is showing up. Maybe it's uh, looping. Do I have pre-warm? There's no start delay. Like as soon as I put it in, like it... Yeah, it's a little too small. Exactly what it is. Uh, we want to start. Ooh, a lifetime. So let's do a pre warm here for a second. Simulate lifetime needs to be one. The duration of this will be one second. We'll click apply. Remove that, click save. But you can sort of see it coming through. And then it dies. So that kind of character, the blood splat, won't work very well. Uh, you could always kind of like move the blood splat forward in the. So like when if you were to pause the game at the right time when the blood splat's in there, you could actually see where it pops up on the character, and then uh, you can actually make a new game object and then child uh, the blood splat to the jo the game object when you zero zero it. Uh, you can actually just move it a little more forward like this on the game object. So that this way it it's outside of the character instead of in the center. So if I was to save this I'd actually have to make a bunch more changes. I guess we'll do it anyway. Uh, splat 2 we'll call it. Put that in here. Go into our skill, which is super simple. On skill hit, let's change our blood splat right here. Yeah, let's uh, shrink this. Assets, splat two, boom. Uh, this thing's in the way still too. This might be a little bit of a long video, but I'm sure YouTube will still let me upload it. <coughs> I'm just enjoying this. Uh, so uh, as you can see, I uh, actually put it backwards on the back. Maybe put it on the top by accident. No, oh, he's dead now. That's why. <laughs> but uh, you can see that he is being hit and dying. So uh, in the next video, I will be 
Oh, really? 